So first of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about my motivation um, and my history um, and why I think what I do at Amazon is relevant uh, to discuss here. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the services, which um, are part of my portfolio, uh, a couple use cases, and then I hope uh, for a lot of questions and answers. So let's start with the first one. My motivation, my personal background, thank you very much, Jessica. Um, I'm a serial entrepreneur since uh, the mid-90s. So um, I love establishing new ideas um, in, in a company and sell them. I started with that when I was 16, um, sold the first company when I was 19, and then basically um, got into after, after I, wa I sold my first company, got into machine learning of sorts. Um, um, so my focus is speech recognition, machine translation, and computer vision. And um, the first place where I touched it was when I was da working with Daimler-Benz. Um, we were working on projects um, to allow the computer to understand what we speak, uh, so that's that's one thing. Then you might also know that the first um, uh, autonomous car is not something which happened over the last five years. In the mid-90s, Daniel Benz was working on that as well, so I was um, uh, tangential, do you say that in English? Tangential, uh, um, involved in this one, but mostly on the um, speech and language side of things. After that, I started my own company um, out of uh, Germany. So my, my origin, my, that's my, why my um, accent is German. I, was, I am from Germany, so I just uh, relocated 13 years ago. So explain again, I started focusing on the core technology to develop speech recognition and machine translation. And um, we did a few really interesting uh, projects. I mean, one of them is that we built the first speech recognition engine for the um, A8, um, Audi A8, which uh, you might, uh, some of you might have experienced um, with 20 words vocabulary, being able to like dictate um, or like uh, dial from while you're driving, dial um, a phone number and so forth. Uh, it was a lot of fun, but we will, did also things which are not as mainstream uh, for example, we established a speech recognition engine for the F-16, uh, where basically the pilot has both hands necessary to be able to steer the, steer the plane. It's a fast plane. You have to have full control over it. But at the same time, you need to control the visual, the screens, and all of that. So we established speech recognition in there which was a, tr a challenge because it's not very quiet in that, in that kind of plane. Uh, we did the same for the Gazelle um, uh, helicopter, which is again, I mean, you have multiple people sitting in that plane, uh, in that, in that uh, aircraft, but it's very loud um, and we still don't have enough hands um, to do everything manually. Um, what we also did is um, the first speech translation um, capability, which um, we piloted with uh, Swisscom in, uh, in Switzerland to allow people to communicate across, across language boundaries, uh, Polish into German, English into German, and so forth, which was in 2002 quite early. I mean, that was a little bit ahead of the time. I mean, it was relatively expensive. Um, yeah, and then I sold my company to um, Eptic, um, which was an established company in the government business in the East Coast, still is, um, which does speech recognition, machine translation, and um, they utilized also the computer vision, which we worked on in Explain Age to do many multiple um, uh, projects with the US government. Um, so certain agencies need to understand the, the vast amount of data which, um, which we are facing today is just not possible if we don't utilize technology. And then SAIC uh, purchased Eptech at some point and then they changed uh, 
um, their plans and uh, went out of uh, went out of the product development again. But uh, when I was with SASC, I worked on DARP on a DARPA project, which is also a lot of fun. We had to develop um, we had to develop a, a, um, a capability where you interact with the robot in real time in multiple languages and tell, for example, a robot to go to a certain place, pick up something, and come back. So there's multiple things involved here. One is speech. One is machine translation, because it's multiple languages. One is also being able to reason by itself. So because um, the robot can move around, and there might be obstacles, there might be issues, needs to figure out what to do at, at each individual point. What we also taught that capability is to learn new things. So if I say certain things which are ambiguous, it will ask me, um, when you talk about bank, is it the institution or is it um, alongside the river, for example? So something before it does any decisions which might not be 100% that the system will learn what what to do, but also new words, new concepts. Um, so if a word and a concept was never recognized before, that the system will learn um, what it means by asking, what do you mean by, can you find another, can you describe, something like that, so that the system will learn as long as it continues. That was um, a great project. Um, it uh, ended for our team in 2013. Um, continued for a couple more years um, with the agency itself to do things which, um, yeah, which things they care about more than uh, research itself. So that's that's something which was which was a lot of fun. After that, I decided to go back into commercial business, and eBay. Uh, so so um, and eBay heard that I wanted to leave uh, SAIC and um, uh, approached me with. Uh, a fascinating task. Um, eBay needed a capability to enable cross-border trade. Um, that sounds now relatively easy, but if you think about how many languages we have in the world, 6,000 languages, um, there is not enough human translators um, around the world to basically be able to take the 800 million or 1 billion items on, which are available for the customer um, and translate them. So they said, okay, we need a machine translation, and it can't be that's just the out-of-the-box machine translation which we can get from Microsoft, Google, et cetera, et cetera, but it has to um, be specialized to the domain of commerce. So that was fascinating for me because of different things. One is I can build an AI which can, according to, which can learn from the interaction with the inventory, learn. Um, if I give a translation, for example, and I interact with it, the user interacts with it and buys a product, it might be a good signal for me. So these signals, usually, if you're doing only core technology, are hidden from you. You don't see them because you just develop the technology and there's no feedback mechanism which is built in. Now, inside eBay, we could do that, which was, which was awesome. So the machine translation, which we implemented there, does 8 billion today, 8 billion translations a day, which is four times as much as Google Translate does. Um, so, um, but at the end of the day, no one really has to like, experience the machine translation itself. People don't even feel that they see translation. If you're a Russian user, you see it all in Russian. You basically interact with the system, and that's it. If you want to, if you really are interested in seeing the original language, you click um, and see the original language. This is happening less than 1% of the time. So seem, it seems that the people are happy with the translations. And the revenue was also a very good indicator for us that it was doing very well. So that was with eBay. Uh, we started developing other capabilities. Um, you might have also, um, you might have heard about the Google Shop, uh, the eBay Shopbot, um, which is basically a, a virtual agent which uh, interacts with the user and uh, leads to an interaction, leads to a, 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 a sale. So that you go into a, a Facebook uh, Messenger bot 
and then communicate with the shop bot and say, I would like to buy some shoes. Instead of showing you all kinds of shoes, it will, st uh, it will start thinking, okay, it's not specific enough. I need to drill down a little bit further. If I don't know you, I ask you male, female, size, color, materials, things like that, which, which leads you to something. Or you can go ahead and say, I need a present for my daughter, uh, uh, her birthday. Um, then basically the system will know maybe I interacted with the system before. It knows that my daughter is a 17-year-old interested in a certain thing. It might adjust it accordingly. Um, what we also implemented in, inside the same uh, solution is computer vision is part of communication. That's how I uh, see it philosophically. If people interact with each other through Messenger, they don't interact only using words or voice snippets, but they use also visual clues, either emoticons or they take a picture of something which is around them and so forth. So we implemented that in the ShopBot as well. Now, this capability is all not only uh, good for commerce. So um, to expand further than that, Amazon is for me a great, uh, a great platform. This is why I joined Amazon. It's a great platform to um, uh, uh, to make it available for much more. And um, this is what my, my thing is at Amazon today. So, during my history, um, I saw that business ideas oftentimes require complex AI services. I'm talking about speech recognition. Today we see that in many applications working. That didn't happen overnight. It worked, uh, it's hard work. There's billions and billions of dollars which went into research in this one. And still, if you want to develop speech recognition today, it's not a trivial task, still. Um, you need data, you need uh, engines, you need scientists which are, can be really expensive. Um, 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 and time. And time is, uh, is a very, very important uh, component here. So um, if you talk about real-time speech translation in the early 2000s, you had to basically sit down and in invest a lot of money into building core capabilities. Or personal voice assistant like eBay, uh, we did that actually as what we called personal voice assistant, PVA, in the early 2000s as well as an experiment. Was an expensive, uh, was an expensive endeavor. So these challenges can be prohibitive for small, but actually even also for large uh, enterprises to, to, um, to, to realize what they have in uh, terms of business ideas. So what Amazon offers to simplify ma many of those things is multiple um, software services. So for example, Alexa, when it came out, um, and uh, until now, obviously, is we want to develop the ubiquitous computing um, environment, which Kevin also talked about earlier. So we want to have the system available at your fingertips anytime. Um, to be able to do that, there is challenges. It's not easy to have uh, basically that kind of sensor in double quotes in every home, for example. Amazon that did that job. Um, now what we offer is um, our, our three services within Alexa, where you can basically establish your own business um, on, as, a, as a layer on top of Alexa. So using Alexa Skills Kit, you can sit down and develop uh, a new capability. You don't need to, it's, it's easier to access the user by just basically building an, uh, an Alexa skill and um, integrate it with your business, um, like many companies, more than 10,000 uh, companies or skills were developed by third parties. Uh, what we also have is the Alexa voice services. So basically, you, you, what you can do is we don't need to like be married to Echo as a, as a piece of hardware. Develop your own hardware, put our stuff on there. You can, you can, you can do that as well. And if the idea is really good and something which we are believing in, um, we have also funds which can be uh, uh, looked into and see wh wh how, th how that matches, and we, we support that. Um, 
One of the critical components, obviously, for Alexa is the smart home. I mean, so first integration of what Alexa was, was actually all these uh, sensors which you have at home, uh, the thermostat, the um, lights, the, uh, I mean, all, all uh, Wi-Fi enabled uh, capabilities you have at home, and make it voice enabled. Um, and the other thing is um, our own content also was uh, used quite often, so things like uh, music and uh, reading a book and this and that can be accessed through Alexa as well. By the way, the smart home is for me um, also very, um, so there is a history there as well. So as, as I was with Explain Agi, one of our uh, like prototypes and uh, demos was actually that we had in our offices um, shades which I could voice activate. Um, today it's so easy, within an hour you can build this kind of capability. It was a little bit more complicated at, uh, in, in 2001 or whatever, whenever we did that. So um, this, is, uh, this is very critical. So the other, other than um, Alexa, we have the um, Amazon Web Services. This is all very small, I know, uh, but you can go to the um, AWS side and you will see those. So which, uh, what I'm going to be talking about a little bit is uh, two services, the ones which are in yellow. One is the artificial intelligence and one is the Internet of Things. So we are trying to simplify, abstract out some of the uh, problems you would have if you would need to develop everything from scratch so that you can focus on the actual solution instead of building platforms for, I don't know, devices and platform for AI and so forth by yourself. So I'm going to start with Internet of Things. So we have the Internet of Things services since October 2015. Um, um, that is basically um, to easily and securely connect devices in the cloud, reliably scale to billions of devices and trillions of messages. So that's basically our, our um, claim to fame on this, on this one. We went a little bit ahead, uh, we went a little bit further this year, or last year, end of last year. We said um, some of these devices are actually not only sensors anymore. There's intelligence in those as well. So why don't we use that? And this is what we started um, also building as a platform ev for everyone to utilize um, as well. It, we call it AWS Greengrass, and um, the idea is local compute, messaging, and data caching for connected devices run Internet of Things applications seamlessly across the AWS cloud and local devices using AWS Lambda and AWS IoT. What is AWS Lambda? Lambda is basically a capability that you um, uh, basically develop a function, have it in the cloud, and whenever there is a need for it, you like start it up and uh, go, uh, have it go down. It doesn't need to be like uh, uh, a, a server, so to say. So that's basically it. And um, if you think about, um, for example, the thermostat oftentimes is, a little, is more intelligent. Some decisions can happen on the device itself. There's more devices which are going to come up from third parties. I can, well, actually, so if you think about routers, um, they're little computers, about other things. I mean, there is a lot of intelligence which are in devices today. They're not, uh, they're just, not just uh, uh, taking signals and sending them over the network anymore. So you can check it out also here on the, on the website, um, awsamazon.com, Greengrass. This is right now, we're testing it out. I think they're coming out with that um, for everyone soon, but um, let's, uh, let's see how, how, that, how that goes. It's very, it's very exciting, actually. So next thing, the thing which I'm, uh, I'm uh, managing from the science perspective is artificial intelligence. So we built... Um, a service which we call Amazon Machine Learning. Amazon Machine Learning is really core machine learning f without def definition what the application is because we assume that uh, 
we don't even know what kind of machine learning is going to happen over the next years. I mean, there's so many use cases. Every day we have new use cases which we don't think about. So instead of basically having to build everything completely from scratch, we have a platform. We use it ourselves. We can share it. Um, so this is Amazon's philosophy, actually, that when we develop everything as a service for ourselves and see which we are starting to use it across different domains and across different tasks, we start uh, building out services not only for ourselves but also for our customers. Um, machine learning is uh, definitely front and center on this one. Uh, Lex is another one. So we have experience in Alexa. We collected um, about conversational speech on how to have a system in, uh, understand language and um, interact with a, with a service uh, on a natural way. So bringing technology to understand us instead of what we had 10 years or 15 years ago, um, needing specialists to basically be able to interact with technology. So we are basically uh, making the machines more human-like than we needing to adapt to the machine. So Lex is a nice platform. You, uh, and it's not bound to Alexa itself. Um, so uh, we, have, we have a lot of interest. I mean, we started, um, we, we, we announced it in November, end of November 2016. We have a lot of people who are interested in, 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 in utilizing that. And for many reasons, people are uh, experienced with AWS. They have their data on AWS. And they want to basically interact in AWS the secure way they all, always do for, I don't know, like 12 or whatever um, AWS is on the market years. Um, so it's, uh, it's getting a lot of, a lot of good uh, response. Even though it's not, it's still in a pilot phase or in a beta phase. I don't remember the wording for this one. But it's not completely opened up yet because we want to grow with, with the demand. But it looks, uh, it looks very, very good. So about the conversational interactions, I think this is an important uh, discussion point here. So um, we see that communication with machines used to be, if you think about, about a few years back, the first generation, the machine was the center, and we were basically optimizing our workflows. If we want to interact with the machine, we needed to learn how the machine thinks and basically encode that in such a way that the machine has not much more to do than just do the actual calculation, the decision. Um, second generation is more control-based, control so workflows. Uh, things like, uh, um, I know a certain workflow, I just encode that, and then basically I have to press buttons, what kind of workflow, what step in the workflow I need to do. Today is more intent. <clears throat> so all the bot platforms, um, are intent driven. So we do not necessarily want you to tell us, if you're developing a Lex app, for example, Lex application, then you don't need to <clears throat> tell us the, the details about what to do. Just tell us what the intent is, what you expect out of it, and the AI hopefully will figure out a path to what needs to be done to get to your goal. So this is, this is going to be, today, intents are very, uh, very simple. We're still working on more complicated things. Um, and you can, I mean, if you have an Alexa at home, or if you have an Echo at home, you can uh, try it out. So things like um, asking for a certain information, if it's directly understandable, is easy. But if you ask, for example, for who was the president when uh, Trump was a teenager. Ask that question to the Alexa. It can do that. But that complexity of uh, questions to be answered is not always possible yet. Um, that's, that's the next step. I mean, the immediate next step here for, for us. But we want to do even more complex things where I don't want to tell the system how to get um, certain information on where from. It should automatically learn it uh, by itself. Uh, we'll, we'll see that uh, in the next uh, couple of years, I think. So back to the Amazon AI and the services. So we established, in, in my team, we have Amazon Recognition, uh, which is basically 
recognizing objects, recognizing faces on images and uh, making them available. So um, that is the service. Then we have Amazon Polly, which is generating um, spoken utterances, like um, audible um, utterances out of textual input. Then we have Amazon Lex. Um, and then there's other things which are going to come this year. Um, we have more um, d lower to in towards the tech technology, we have things which we call AI platforms, something uh, like Amazon Machine Learning, Amazon Elastic MapReduce, Spark and Spark Machine Learning, and other things which are going to come um, this year as well. And then we have also, if someone really wants to stick to their own thing, their own development, they can basically run on AI engines which we make available. So we have Apache MXNet, which we are, we love internally. We, this is our um, the ch choice of, uh, uh, of engine. But we have also TensorFlow, which, Google's, which Google supports. Cafe, Torch, Theano, CNTK, and Keras. CNTK, for example, is a Microsoft um, uh, thing. Fortunately, all these AI engines are, um, is it all? Yes, all of them are um, open source. Uh, everyone is uh, contributing to them. And this is actually a, a matter which is very important. Science should stay open. We are very much into that uh, because that is the way you can grow it, but also you have a better control over um, that AI, sir, uh, AI sense doesn't go off a path which we don't want to. So this is, I think, a very, very good uh, way of having some control of it. And then, of course, the hardware. We have the P2 engines. We have EMR Spark, ECS, Lambda, Greengrass, FPGAs, etc., where we can basically um, ride on top and run things on. More are to come, actually, in 2017. Stay tuned. It's going to be a lot of fun. So where is, where is stuff being utilized? Um, so we have people um, on AWS using it for autonomous dri uh, driving systems, um, where basically objects are recognized on streets and, uh, and so forth. Um, in also more complicated situations, like in a city to the left, if you see, there is not only the cars. On the right, you see cars um, needed to be categorized. But you are in a highway. You have no more, not, not much more complexity. But if you see here, buses, people walking around the, around the, on, on the street and all of that. And AI is uh, doing OK with the classification. Uh, so we are quite proud of, uh, of the experience our users are having with our, with our AI. Um, so we have, we have customers you might heard about, like Wolfram Alpha, uh, Alpha for example, to get information, Pinterest. Uh, what do I have here? Otherwise, Pinterest again. So if you go, so we have the visual search. We are partnering tightly with Pinterest together, for example. Um, then we have Pinterest Lens, which is um, also a service which we are working very tightly with them together. I mean, and then recommendation and ranking at Netflix. Netflix is running on AWS. Um, obviously, they have their own AI as well, but they're utilizing our AI as well with them. So it's uh, um, recognition is part of what you had seen before um, when we had the autonomous vehicles, but um, uh, an image like that will give us information that there is a skateboard, sports, there's people, person, human, parking, parking lot, automobile, cars, vehicles, intersection, road, boardwalk, path, and pavement, and sidewalk. This is what typically uh, uh, um, image classification uh, systems are going to give you. But then we have also things like more complex situations, uh, more complex things which we can extract now. Things like, on the right-hand side, you will see, looks like a face, appears to be female, smiling, appears to be happy, wearing eyeglasses, wearing sunglasses. So those are information which the system automatically figured out from that image. So it's now, instead of just identifying objects and simple um, I, uh, like um, environmental um, uh, clues, we can now starting to figure out 
putting them together. Like, uh, looks like a face, appears to be uh, female, smiling, appears to be happy. So um, we're going to be getting uh, much more um, uh, better on this one over time. So, yeah, what AI allows is model training inference in the cloud and inference at the edge, which is, for example, Internet of Things. Um, it is uh, our Apache MXNet, which we are very much fan of, is programmable, portable, high performance. We have the best scientists out of Carnegie Mellon, which are now part of our team, uh, running, running, the, uh, running the MXNet from within, within Amazon. Um, and uh, those are technical things. So something which um, excites me as a scientist uh, very much is um, MXNet allows us to scale. So for, uh, oftentimes, uh, you see platforms which are available where the overhead um, is so high that if you, if you use one machine versus 10 machines, you will see, for example, a 50%, uh, like, um, uh, not 10 times improvement, but maybe a five times improvement because the overhead is killing some of the, um, the efficiency. Amazon, is, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, MXNet, it's not only Amazon, MXNet in general, um, allows you to go uh, with a high efficiency even for thousands of uh, units, which is, which is critical if you have really uh, complex problems to solve. So um, instead of basically saying, okay, our cap is at 50 or 100 GPUs, um, we are running on tens of thousands of GPUs for some tasks uh, because we can. Um, so uh, this, is, this is actually quite, quite cool. Uh, so um, another task here. Well. As I said, it was founded, uh, so MXNet as a, as a platform, as a, like a core platform, is founded by University of Washington and Carnegie uh, Mellon about one and a half years ago. Um, some of the founders are now part of, uh, part of what uh, Amazon is, like uh, Alex Mola and uh, Mu. Uh, um, so, and we recently um, like put it into an Apache um, uh, it, it's now accepted in the Apache incubator, and um, we are growing that in multiple multiple things. So it, it connects to all kinds of languages, com, com, uh, programming languages, and so forth. So we are building our services mostly on those. Yeah, that's actually comparison with others. Um, Platform support, I didn't say that we're running on all kinds of uh, platforms, Linux, Windows, OS X, mobile, uh, your router. Um, yeah, so this is all very technical. You're welcome to uh, go into our website. We have a lot of papers uh, if you're interested in uh, deep technical details on this one. Um, you can, you can, you can dig into it and ask. So this is what I have to present.